All right, today we're jumping right into a home lab storage war that's about way more than just data. This is a battle of philosophies, you know? It really gets to the heart of the whole self-hosting community. We're talking about the big showdown, SEPT versus ZFS. This one's for all of you with clusters built in basements and garages, all driven by that passion for tinkering and for being in control. And you just gotta love this quote from the Proxmox community. It's so intense, right? It could basically be Seth's unofficial slogan. It speaks to this raw, untamed power that's, well, it's super alluring, but as we're about to see, it's also incredibly demanding. This really sets the stage for a choice between two very, very different paths. So believe it or not, this whole firestorm kicked off with a simple home lab reorganization. Some user just asked, hey, for my two node cluster, should I use Ceph or ZFS replication? And wow, that one question just opened the floodgates. It turned what should have been a technical choice into this deep, passionate discussion about performance versus simplicity and raw power versus, you know, peace of mind. Okay, so let's meet our first contender, Ceph. This is the heavyweight champion of storage, no question. It was born for massive scale. We're talking petabytes of data in huge enterprise data centers. So for a home lab, bringing Ceph in, it feels like you're tapping into this almost mythical level of power. But as the title here suggests, that power can definitely come with a price. So what's the big deal with Ceph? Well, the promise is huge. It offers true shared storage, which means every computer in your cluster sees the exact same live data all at the same time. For a high availability setup, this is the golden ticket. It means you get instant failover if a machine goes down and these incredibly smooth live migrations for your virtual machines. But of course, there's always a catch, isn't there? This level of professional grade power, it doesn't come for free. And the thing with Seth is, when things go wrong, they don't just go a little wrong. They can go spectacularly, epically wrong with these cascading failures that can take down your entire cluster. And the barrier to entry for Ceph, it's pretty high. It demands a serious hardware commitment. You need a bare minimum of three separate machines or nodes just to get started. But really, as the community will tell you, you want five or more if you actually want a stable self-healing system. And on top of all that, high-speed networking isn't just a nice to have, it's completely non-negotiable. And this quote from a seasoned admin really gets to the human cost of it all. See, Ceph requires constant attention. It's kind of like owning a Formula One car. You have to be ready to get your hands dirty and maintain it. ZFS, on the other hand, is praised for its simplicity. It's the reliable daily driver that, well, it just works. All right, now let's meet our second contender, ZFS. If Ceph is that Formula One car, then ZFS is the quiet, pragmatic overachiever. It's the reliable workhorse that has won the hearts of countless home lab enthusiasts for a very good reason. Okay, so the core difference is how ZFS works. Unlike Ceph's real-time, all-the-time data distribution, ZFS uses a much simpler snapshot-based approach. At set intervals, say every 15, five, or even every one minute, it takes a snapshot and copies only the changes over to another node. Now, this is an instant, and that means if a node fails right before a sync, yeah, you might lose the last few minutes of work. But for many, that's a trade-off they're more than willing to make. And let's really talk about that delay, right? Because while you might set a replication interval of say 15 minutes, the actual time it takes to sync the data for a typical home lab virtual machine is incredibly short. Users are reporting that for VMs with just minimal changes, the sync itself often finishes in just three to five seconds. It's super efficient. And that right there, that's the core philosophy of ZFS in the home lab. It doesn't promise the absolute instantaneous perfect world of Ceph. Instead, it offers a solution that is more than good enough for pretty much any personal project. It just fits that DIY spirit perfectly. It's reliable without needing a whole team of sysadmins on call 24 seven. So let's put these two head to head. This table really breaks down the two different ways of thinking. Ceph gives you constant live synchronization, which is best for these huge demanding clusters. ZFS uses periodic snapshots, which is just perfect for smaller, efficient home labs. But look at the biggest risk for each one. With Ceph, you risk a total, spectacular, cluster-wide failure. With ZFS, you risk some minor data loss. It's a classic trade-off between raw power and just containing the risk. Okay, now let's get into one of the key battlegrounds where these differences really, really shine. And that's live migration. You know, that magic trick of moving a running virtual machine from one physical box to another without any downtime at all? So here's what's actually happening under the hood. 
With Ceph, the storage is already live and available on all the nodes, so migration only needs to transfer the active memory, the RAM. It is incredibly fast. ZFS, though, has an extra step. It first syncs the very latest disk changes before it transfers the RAM. So, theoretically, this should be a lot slower. But theory and practice can be two very different things, can't they? The original user who actually started this whole debate went and tested it. For their setup, a live migration of a container using ZFS took just eight seconds. I mean, for a home lab, an eight-second delay in exchange for massive simplicity, that is a trade that most people would happily make any day of the week. And this, this brings us to the philosophical heart of the whole matter. You know, beyond the benchmarks and the technical specs, the real question this whole debate asks is, how much complexity is too much? Ceph is so seductive because it promises this perfect professional-grade reliability, but it also demands your constant attention. So, what was the community's final verdict? Well, in the end, it wasn't just about the technology. It was about the whole purpose of a home lab in the first place. It's about the joy of creation, right? The satisfaction of being in control and the thrill of making something that is truly yours. When the dust finally settled, the consensus leaned heavily towards FS. Why? Because it just fits the rhythm of home lab life. It respects that your tinkering should be fun, not a part-time job you dread. Using Ceph for a small setup was even described as using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. And crucially, because ZFS nodes are storage independent, if one of them fails, the others just keep on chugging along. That is practical, real-world resilience. And this final thought, man, it just perfectly encapsulates the entire debate. In a community that is absolutely obsessed with uptime, the most valuable feature isn't always the most powerful one. Sometimes the best system is the one that lets you sleep at night. So the real question for your lab is this, what's more important to you, ultimate power or just some peace of mind?